Uh, I'd like to begin by saying thank you to the organizers for having me here at uh, Cape Town. Uh, like Mark and Susan, who spoke before me, I'm also not a lawyer, so please be generous when I make uh, mistakes. It's also the first time that I'm making this particular presentation, so please be gentle. Uh, what I'm trying to do is respond uh, to Ahmed's challenge, which is how do we connect the access to knowledge world to other more fundamental rights such as uh, privacy? And also perhaps building on Tobias's uh, argument, which is that one size does not fit all. Uh, this diagram was uh, produced by a gentleman called David Eads. He works uh, on managing communities. He has worked with the Mozilla Foundation. Uh, I had a conversation with David Eads in Bangalore, and I sketched for David the first two rows of this diagram. And then David went home and sketched all the other rows. Uh, what you have on the first uh, row and on the far uh, left is the proprietary model. And then we go right through uh, no derivatives, no commercial, which is the CC model. Then the classic GNU GPL. Oh, sorry, that should be, that's a mistake on this diagram. The share alike is uh, GNU, but the next one should be just BSD without the GPL. Uh, the next line is ignoring proprietary rights, which is the pirate model. And then you have other models which even ignore the attribution layer, uh, counterfeiting, plagiarism, claiming false attribution. So the important division, at least for me, on the freedom continuum, uh, David Eves has called this the openness continuum, is that part of the continuum has the attribution layer intact, and part of the continuum does not have the attribution layer intact. Using this model, I'm hoping to explain a variety of phenomena, from what journalists do, to what Lawrence Lessig says, to what Aaron Schwartz did, the Pirate Party, uh, the free software world, the open content world, the open data world, and other groups such as Yes Men and Anonymous, broadly divided into that part of the world which is protected by state regulation, and that part of the world which is mostly protest and counter power strategies. Very broadly, one could say that the more to the right you are, the more radical your position on these questions. So let's start with uh, the middle, the four freedoms enabled by the general public license, the GNU general public license. The simple way to Remember this is to compare software with your clothing. Mm -hmm. You can use your clothing for any purpose. If you want to change your profession from intellectual property, academics, to fashion designers, then you have the right to study your clothing. If you're unhappy with the boring colors you wear, you can modify your clothing. Yeah. And uh, you can also potentially share your clothing uh, both the original version or derivative versions, either for free or for a fee. Uh, I have not used the exact definition in the GNU general public license, but in brackets, you have the numbers uh, within the general public license from zero to three. Uh, I have split uh, number two into two pieces, study and modify. But uh, unlike uh, tangible objects like clothing, uh, I don't lose my copy of software when I share it with you, so you don't have the horror of seeing me naked, etc. So uh, that's the advantage. The obligations are attribution, uh, share alike for derivatives, and source code and availability to enable uh, the freedom to study and the freedom to modify. So that's right in the middle of the diagram, uh, the GNU general public license. Uh, moving on to the uh, copy center license, uh, the BSD license, distinct from the copy left license. With the copy center license, derivative works can either be copyright 
or copy center, or copy left, you can change the license of the derivative work. And because there is no shared-like obligation, uh, I would like to see it as the fifth freedom. So five freedoms on the BSD license. But still, there is the obligation for attribution and uh, source code availability for the original to enable the freedom to study and modify. Uh, now let's go to the more restrictive side. Uh, Creative Commons licenses, a bouquet of licenses, and let's try and map them against the very same set of freedoms. Uh, there are options uh, within this bouquet. Some licenses don't come with all the freedoms. Uh, the non-commercial license, licenses interfere with the use freedom, the freedom of use. Uh, study is not sufficiently distinct in the world of Creative Commons. There is no source code parallel. Perhaps there could be when uh, authors, animators uh, produce or distribute their works. They could perhaps also share drafts and drawings and source material. Uh, this is possible, but we don't really see it in practice. Uh, those licenses that have no derives condition interferes with the freedom to modify. Uh, again, those licenses that have the non-commercial requirement interfere with uh, the freedom to share. And the licenses that have the share-alike requirement interfere with the freedom not to share. And the obligation remains attribution. So if you did the math, since I'm an engineer, I always reduce it to numbers. Uh, five minus zero to two you could end up with anywhere between five to three uh, freedoms. So that's why I have put it uh, to the left, and it stretches right across on the, co on the continuum. Piracy, uh, without the enabling license, of course, uh, you could do anything that you possibly can, so five plus plus. Uh, there is no source code uh, availability. But you could potentially reverse engineer, not uh, foolproof methodology. And in some jurisdictions, this is a user right, so that this will be possible. Yeah. Uh, but in most cases, again, very interestingly, uh, the pirates don't play around with attribution. Suppose I were to go to Pirate Bay and upload a torrent of Miley Cyrus's latest album, then I don't say the album is by me. I, I continue to say that this is Miley Cyrus's album. So, uh, attribution still seems to be sacred for the pirates. They don't play with it as much as I'd like them to play with it. Um, this is my uh, favorite artist from Bangalore, a gentleman called uh, Kiran Subbaya. And this is the license terms for uh, some of his works. Uh, I don't, I'm not sufficiently qualified to comment on things like original pho photocopy. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, forgery and pirating welcome. So pirating we already dealt with on the previous slide. So let's, uh, look, at the, let's look at the additional uh, freedom provided by this license. Uh, sorry, we should. OK, we'll do these also. So anonymous, uh, super interesting. The mask comes from the movie V for Vendetta, and uh, also the comic that preceded the movie by Alan Moore. And the most important uh, event in the comic and most important scene in the movie is when uh, we distributes uh, thousands of copies of the mask, and then the citizens rise against the pervasive surveillance state, and they all share V's identity. They all wear the common mask. Uh, and if you think of anonymous uh, in the copyright frame, what they do is really produce works of copyright. They produce software which helps you launch denial of service attacks, distributed denial of service attacks. Almost everything that they do is mostly uh, the production of copyright works. This is uh, what, what anonymous does. And 
they have given us the secret or the uh, recipe to deal with pervasive state uh, surveillance, which is very important after Edward Snowden's disclosures. A similar, another group that hacks the identity or attribution layer in the freedom continuum is the Yes Men. So there was a big disaster in India where a factory producing, uh, I don't know, fertilizer leaked and uh, harmful substances were released into the environment. Many people died, many people continue to live, thousands of people continue to live with uh, injuries even today. And the corporation Dow Jones, which was uh, Dow, which was responsible for this accident, industrial accident, uh, did not take responsibility, does not take responsibility even to, to today, to this day. So the yes men uh, pretended to be Dow representatives, managed to fool BBC World, got onto television on the anniversary of the tragedy in Bhopal, and then apologized on behalf of the corporation and promised to pay all those affected in Bhopal compensation. Almost immediately, uh, the stock value dropped in the Frank Frankfurt Stock Exchange, wiping off $2 billion of market value. But uh, because they were able to issue a statement correcting this, uh, share value, of course, recovered. So they do, these are pranksters. And they have conducted several pranks. You should go and visit the website to get an idea of what they have managed to accomplish. So what does uh, Kiran Subaya and the Yes Men and Anonymous have in common? Uh, it's, again, six plus plus freedoms. You can do whatever it is that you can do. If you can do it, then you uh, are allowed to do it. And in particular, the exciting part is you're attributing your work uh, to others. So the anonymity afforded by the crowd or a shared pseudonymous identity uh, renders requirements such as know your customer or KYC. This is how we refer to it in India. And uh, data retention requirements completely irrelevant. Uh, therefore, the state is unable to pin down uh, your, a particular act uh, against a particular person, and that is why they are so effective. Ideally, this uh, should go beyond just sharing intangible objects. We should also be sharing uh, tangible objects. If we had a community where people shared uh, SIM cards or shared uh, phones or uh, laptops, much more complicated for the state to figure out what exactly is going on. Or an even simpler example, if you left your Wi-Fi router open, then anybody could potentially be using your connection. You have what they call plausible deniability. Uh, main takeaways, uh, no one size fits all. Uh, maybe a alternative way of saying it is freedom is like the Kama Sutra. There is a multiplicity of positions. <laughs> so just as sh shared knowledge is the way we deal with the access to knowledge challenge, shared identities is the way we should deal with the surveillance challenge. Shared identities is one way we can protect our privacy. To give you an example of how uh, uh, we can s stretch these ideas, not really in a shared identity sense, is the UID project in India. It's a project that hopes to collect biometric information from all Indian citizens, iris data from both eyes and fingerprint data from all 10 fingers, and use it to identify Indian citizens and authenticate Indian citizens every time they deal with the state 
or every time they deal with a variety of essential uh, products and services. So the project that I'm trying to start called Pl Plausible Deniability would be to scan my fingerprints and my iris and then upload that information onto the internet under an open license perhaps and then have plausible deniability. Whenever the state says, I subscribe for a telephone connection or a broadband connection, I will say, can't be me. My biometrics are up on the internet. Um, another smaller takeaway, and since I have a child and I've stopped reading thick books, I only read uh, books about mice uh, to her, uh, is that if attribution is no longer sacred, as hopefully the Freedom Continuum argues, then intangible labor is not necessarily more important than tangible labor and vice versa. Uh, this uh, story, parable perhaps, Frederick by Leo Leone, is the story of a mouse that engages in intangible labor, producing poetry and um, making speeches, who lives with a family of other mice that uh, uh, engage in tangible labor and how they have a deal amongst themselves and how they work for one another. So it's a nice story and you should read it. This is my scholarly reference for this uh, research finding. Uh, these are the limitations of my framework. I won't uh, dwell on them because I've run out of time. I'll just uh, use the opportunity to plug a workshop on Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, the workshop is titled What Technological patent pools can learn from the access uh, to medicines movement. Uh, Professor George Contreras is organizing this workshop. Uh, I'm supporting him, and it would be lovely if some of you can join us at that workshop. Uh, our countries depend upon cheap access devices, sub $50, sub $100 devices, and access to those devices is going to be stopped unless we can address the patent problem just as we did uh, for medicines. Thank you.